Hello guys, today we are going to start working with virtual work, virtual work for beams. And let me see, I, will, I like to do all the time a little bit of review of what virtual work is. Uh, every time that I repeat it, I hope that it's going to get them, you know, ingrained in your brain or implanted in your brain. So virtual work virtual work and we're going to be working for beams but in general let's talk about whatever is the principle of virtual work you have any 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 body <coughs> any structure behaving elastically and subject to i don't know whatever you want to be subject to external loads over there and it's going to deform due to the slots, of course the supports are not going to move from their position, but that is going to happen and it's going to be deforming whatever weird way it has. When these loads are applied internally, you're going to have some forces that are created and those forces are going to deform the structure. So the energy produced by those external forces is going to be uh, stored internally and in the way of the formations and rotations and torsions and and that type of situations so you're going to have those internal deformations where the storage uh, the, the energy is going to be stored now if by any chance uh, and remember Bernoulli did this analysis in 1717 uh, if we are interested in finding the deflection in that particular location he proposed that because the, the conservation of the energy has to apply, the external work it has to be equal to the internal work. So then I put a load over there in the direction of that displacement. And I call that a virtual load because it's, it's a load that doesn't exist. And I can ask, I can give any value to that load. The easiest value to assign is one. So the external work here, and, and, and the important thing here is if you were in my lecture when I was explaining this, this load is here and it said uh, taking the right when you apply the external loads so basically this load because it's displaced due to the external loads is producing a set of internal loads also that external load over there is producing some set of internal loads meaning normal load and uh, or axial load which is the same torsion and you have shear and you have moment internal moment all of those things over there and finally the the work produced by the externally which means that virtual load multiplied by that displacement this is called the external load the external uh, external work has to be equal to the summation of all the internal work produced by this what is the the summation of that the summation of the internal loads produced by the virtual load multiplied by the internal displacement or the formations produced by the real loads and this is the internal work once again this load is the virtual load and this is the real displacement that we are interested in calculate real displacement. These are the internal virtual loads or the internal loads produced by the virtual load and these are the real internal real internal deformations produced by the real external loads. That's basically what happens here. Now what is this when you start, if you're working for displacement in this case, then the external work is going to be 1 times delta. That's 1 because we assign the virtual load as 1. And that has to be equal to the summation of all of that. What is the summation of all of that? The summation of all of that is going to be the internal normal. I'm going to call it normal just to differentiate it from axial multiply by the real deformation. Real deformation in this case in the direction of the axial. What is that real deformation? Remember PL divided by AE. So it's going to be the real deformation, the, the deformation produced by the real loads is going to be N divided by AE multiplied by DL. 
plus then you have the shear the the internal the shear in internal shear produced by the virtual or yeah produced by displacing that virtual load p multiplied by what by the external uh, the deformation produced by the external shear g a b divided by g a d l remember this is the rigidity modules or the shear modules modulus and this is the area in shear and there is a coefficient here called k b that coefficient is a form factor coefficient that k b if i'm not don't don't hold me accountable for that but that, that k b i think it is 0 0.9 for circular sections uh, 1.1 for rectangular, I think, okay, one for uh, W or I beams, and there are other factors here, but these are the main ones that I kind of remember, I don't know if they are inverted or swiped, I don't think so, but this is really easy, you just, you know, Google it and, and can find it, and then you're going to have also the internal moment produced uh, by the displacing the virtual load, and then you have the external load, the uh, deformation moment, E I M E I D L, and then you have the torque, the internal torque, J G, D L, and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. Now, because we're working with beams, usually in the case of if you're working with trusses, this is going to be the one that is going to be everything is axial in trusses, correct? Uh, but if we're working with uh, in two D. It's very difficult to have torsion, although you can have it, but not the common case. And if you're working in beams, then you're going to have these two, basically. However, the effect of the shear, and I'm going to post later an, an, uh, an example to show you what is the, exam the, the influence of the shear in whatever value you are calculating, but it's uh, in the order of 1,000, uh, something like that. So basically, if you're working with beams, which is this case, this is going to be the main effect, the effect due to uh, the moment. Usually, you don't have axial in beams, although you have some type of pre-stress element. But m most of the time, you don't have axial, or it's negligible, the axial. So basically, what you have to do is calculate this. And this is what we are going to start working now. So let's go for the problem that we want to work. This is the problem that I want you to work. It's a really simple problem. Um, you're going to have this. This is going to be a distributed load, like that. You're going to have a load applied here, 35 kip. And this is going to be a roller. And then you're going to have a hinge, because otherwise we're not we're going to have an indeterminate structure and we haven't covered that yet. So this load is going to be 2.5 kip per foot. And A, B, C, D, distances, 16 feet, 8 feet, and 8 feet. What is the question? The question is, find the slope, S-L-O-P-E, 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 the stiffness of this. Okay, slope and the slope and the flexion at D. You can calculate it at any point. But for this particular problem, we are interested in calculated at D. Um, we are going to assume that E is constant and is 30,000 KSI. And the cross-sectional area is going to change. So for this part, it's going to be 4,000 inches to the fourth. I mean, by the cross-sectional area, I mean the moment of inertia because it's the part that is affected and in this part is uh, 3,000 inches to the fourth not the cross-sectional area but the moment of inertia the cross-sectional area will be really important if we are dealing with axial forces because that's what happened because we're dealing only with moment n divided by EI E is constant and I is changing like that 
So if you remember what do we what we have to do basically with the the method of virtual work, if we want to solve this problem, what we have to do is this: we have to create a real structure, which is this one. So we are going to do what? We are going to calculate the internal deformations, internal deformations due to the real forces and by that what I mean is you have to calculate the internal moment internal moment and with this moment you're going to calculate the internal deformation what is the internal deformation m divided by ei dl and once you have that so basically we have to do statics in this beam and then for finding the the, the deflection the slope then we have to apply a virtual rotation or a virtual moment. So we are going to do something like this. I'm going to create my virtual structure. Remember that structure is called the real structure. And now we're gonna create a virtual structure. My virtual structure is gonna be just like that. Who is calling me at this time? I don't know who is calling me. Now nobody's calling me. Okay. Hey, if you are calling me, I'm live. Okay? So stop calling me. A hinge right there. Remember this is a hinge. There you go. And this is a fixed support. And this is a roller. And because I'm interested in rotation or a slope, then I have to apply the unit moment here. That's gonna be my virtual structure for the rotation and if I'm interested in calculating deflection at D remember this is D then same I'm going to create another virtual structure only with that virtual load over there of one kip easy peasy then what are we going to do in this case I'm gonna get this M and in this case I'm gonna get the small m, a small m. What is that a small m? The m coming either from here or from here. So if I'm dealing with rotation, then we have to say that one times the rotation is gonna be equal to the summation of all the internal moments, m multiplied by the internal deformations produced by the external loads, that, and if we're working with displacement, then we're gonna be working with this one times the displacement is going to be the same thing m m over e i dl but in this case this m in both cases come from the real structure in this case this m comes from this one and in this case this m comes from this one i'm going to explain that in the next video so I just wanted to put the introduction, otherwise this is going to be extremely, extremely, extremely long. So watch part two of this problem. See ya.